You're listening to MMA Oddsbreaker. I'm Frank Trigg. Today on the phone we have Court McGee getting ready to fight Robert Whitaker over at UFC Fight Night 27 in Indianapolis. Court, how you doing this morning? I'm doing fantastic. Let's get the uh, the traditional stuff out of the way. I'm going to assume all the answers are going to be positive. Training camp went great. Uh, the best of your life. You feel uh, you're in the best shape you've ever been in. Uh, what else is new uh, during training camp? Well, uh, we worked a little bit more on power. I actually wanted to ask you about that, because uh, with Costas Philip, who we're going back a couple of fights, uh, three fights ago, you lost unanimous decision, and it seemed like that you were throwing a lot of punches without any power during that fight, and then go to the Josh Neer fight, you still were throwing a lot of punches, but with a lot more power. Is this something that you've been progressively trying to work on, is keeping your punch rate up, as well as getting your power back in there as well? specifically working with to get you ready for this? John Hackleman. And now Hackleman's, Hackleman's yeah. been known forever for having guys get good foot motion and, and good hand speed and, and getting their power up and, and, and moving quite a bit. And with Hackleman, did he make any other changes besides just let's work on, you know, foot motion and power? Was there a couple other tricks and trades he put in there as well? Always conditioning. We always change and uh, work with methods of conditioning. Um, also, too, I, I do half of my camp out there in uh, Arroyo Grande, where the pit headquarters, where Chuck did all his camps, Chuck Liddell. And uh, the other half I do it in Utah, uh, in in Orem, Utah. And uh, Jason Mertlick's my coach out there, and he works more of the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu, but we also do our, you know, our striking. And, and the majority of my partners are out there in Utah. I have, you know, all my bigger 170 and 185 and some 205 uh fighters that I have for for training partners. Now, why do you why do you so split the time? Is it because John's at the down in the Royal Grand, and you go back into Utah, or why are you splitting time between the two camps? It's, but it's, it's a good mix because they both do really good conditioning, but it's a little bit different. And so I, I never like uh, it's like I never plateau uh, because I change change from one to the other. We both work on conditioning, but primarily we work a lot more striking and a lot more. Uh, you know, out out of John Ackerman's, and then in Utah, we work a lot more of the the jujitsu and the the wrestling. We have a, a great wrestling coach named Justin Reese. He comes in and works with us, and so we get to work. Uh, you know, the two different aspects of the game, but also too, we still spar and we drill at both of them. It just changes it up a little bit, and then the conditioning is just a little bit different. Equally as hard, but you know, I don't ever plateau because I'm not doing the same thing. All- what is what is your last day of hard sparring during during a training camp? Because I know with the amount of conditioning that you do, and the amount of hard like mitt work and drilling you do, uh, that putting in another couple of days of hard sparring every week is going to be difficult. So what when is your last day that you actually hard spar before a fight? So uh, the last day I had a, a hard conditioning workout was third. Now we fight on Wednesday, so uh, just Thursday last week was was uh, was sparring and conditioning. Uh, and uh, the the next day, the Friday before, you know, this Wednesday, I uh, I I had a, a drilling round. So there wasn't any hard sparring, but there was lots of hard drilling, me striking, and lots of wrestling and takedowns. And just some of the some of the little tactics we're going to try and uh, come out and beat this guy with. And then uh, we finished off with a little short conditioning, but not not super super intensive. And how much, how much, you know, do you do once you get, you know, during, uh, when, once you're at the venue? You know, how much, because now it's just about making weight and being the best way that you can be for the fight come on Wednesday night. What do you do that week as far as, because you're always in great shape when you come, when you come in the fight, which is why it, it's, uh, it, it's very difficult to get you, to finish you at all, because you're always in better shape than the guy, than your opponent. So what do you do during that week to keep that shape up, even though you're trying not to get hurt or lose too much energy? 
and see, there's a fine line because we still like to push it. We still like to drill. Uh, sometimes I bring a partner, sometimes I don't. But we work a lot of mitts. Uh, we do a little short conditioning, so we'll do, uh, you know, things like sprawl drills and we'll all throw four or five punches and sprawl and four or five punches for, for, you know, an interval time. So I get my heart rate up really high, but it's just a short little burst to keep that, keep that interval training up. And then uh, usually I'll have like a two or three mile job that I'll do light, not keep my heart rate up. So we still do those little short burst conditionings, but it's not a 20 minute all out, uh, you know, just drain myself because I want to, I want to try and peak, but I don't want to lose the conditioning that I've worked so hard for. And then, uh, you know, I go over some of the drills and some of the series that I regularly do, uh, for grappling and wrestling and the, the punches to the takedown and kicks to takedowns and then some defensive stuff. Uh, and so I, I keep it, I keep it pretty intense while I'm out here. Uh, and I make sure to keep up the pace. You know, I basically take one day off and during that day, my, my light was just a, a light two mile jog. I mean, I didn't even get my heart rate up. Oh, wow. Okay. It, uh, you actually do, do a lot more work um, than I anticipated. Uh, from a lot of guys I've talked to lately are, are, are coming in and are basically resting and doing just enough to cut weight. You're actually getting through, you know, getting through another cycle of, of workouts that most people don't yeah. want to do because because no, the fear I've of getting. I've done that method. Go ahead. But I feel that my legs get heavy and like and lactic, and so I like to keep that that pace up. But my practice is no longer than 45 minutes, uh, or a tops an hour with a stretch, and that's about what I like to do. My my first little weight cut at is about an hour, and I try to keep it under an hour. So. You know, it's not a. I try and keep it as simple as possible. Uh, I let my coaches do do the thinking because you start cutting weight and you start and you start not thinking and you start worrying and get nervous and things like that rather than relaxing and going out and doing what we should do and that's fight to win. You know. Wow, that's that's uh, that's actually a really good training cycle and, and you've actually uh, educated me a little bit on uh, how to do some stuff during fight week. Um, let's talk about Robert Whitaker now. Let's, let's talk about your opponent. You're coming in at 15 and three. He's coming in at 11 and two. But break down Robert Whitaker for me as you see him as an opponent. Um, I I don't know much about him. I watched one of his fights. He fought Colton, uh, the other Ultimate Fighter winner, and uh, uh, I watched a, a little bit of that fight. And it was and it was during the fight. And that was before I knew I was fighting him, but. Um, I know he has a martial arts background, so do I, and he kind of transferred into MMA, and so did I. Uh, looks like he blitzes, and he's got pretty good, uh, pretty good, you know, hand speed. But you know, biggest thing for me is I try not to worry about my opponent or what he's doing. I try and worry about what I need to do, because uh, I've had times where I, uh, you know, watched the other opponent and and thought, oh, I'm, you know, and, and it. I gotta look for a right hand. I gotta look for a right hand, and then I find myself waiting for his right hand to come in, and then bam, I get hit with the right hand, and so it kind of messes with me a little bit. And uh, the only specific one I can kind of tell you about is uh, Jeremy Horn. I watched him head kick and knock out uh, Forrest Griffin like three thousand times uh, right before I fought him. He was in my seventh professional fight, and I thought this head kick was coming, and. Uh, you know what, he didn't, he didn't throw a head kick not once, he didn't throw a high kick not once. All he did is push me against the cage and try and take me down. And so I thought, man, you know what, I'm going to stop watching footage because I don't know what the guy's going to do. And as long as we know the gist, I'll let my coaches watch it or do whatever they want to do, and then they can adjust my training. That way I don't worry about what he's doing. I worry about what I need to do. And I need to go out there and punch this guy in the face and move my feet. And if he gives me an opening, take him down. And if he gives me another opening to submit him or, you know, get to a position where I can, uh, you know, hit him until they, they stop it, then that's what I need to look for. So I try not to worry about what he's going to do and what he's doing because then I get in my head, you know, and if I put that aside, I don't waste energy on what I think he's going to do. Uh, I, I put energy into what I should be doing and focus on what I need to do. And I've been more successful doing that. You know, and to be honest with you, I really think that that's the way a lot of fighters should be doing it. They spend so much time watching film, and they do expect, just like you said, they do expect their opponent to do certain things that they're not going to do. 
just because they've advanced as well as his fighters. So it's better to watch some film, understand the gist of what's happened with this opponent, what's going on. But then you're right, truly worry about yourself. And I think the fight, the fights will go a lot better. Yeah, I mean, you come out and you have two NCAA All Americans that end up striking the whole fight. They don't even shoot on each other, and so it's kind of like, you know, or or a jujitsu guy that comes out and uh, they don't even go to the ground, or you have an all striker and he comes out and shoots the whole time, and so you know you just you, you just never really know. And over my career, I've tried to constantly improve in every aspect of MMA, and the most important thing for me is to get in shape. It's the worst thing to do. It's the hardest. It, it messes with my head. And it's the most difficult to show up for and to give your best when you're in there. And you know this, man. You've been to the top. And uh, so I like to make sure that, you know, as long as I put everything into my conditioning uh, and try and improve in the wrestling and improve in the jiu-jitsu and, and the striking, then uh, I should become an overall better martial artist. Uh you know, and, and I try and push the limits on the conditioning every time because, uh, you know, as soon as that guy is done, you know, you fatigue and, and you get out, you know, it'll, uh, a champion can go to nothing. You know, if you don't have nothing left, you don't have anything left. That's it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it is, it is the one thing that, that you can control yourself no matter how good or how bad your coaches are is your own conditioning. And really it comes down to a lot of that, Come, you know, Especially when we're talking about like heavier weights. Now, obviously, not your weight class. We're talking about uh, like heavyweights. Yeah. When it comes down to that third round, the guy that's the heavyweights in better shape always ends up winning because there's so much power being yeah. thrown around. Oh, yeah. And that's really true for anybody, you know, in any weight class. It's just you know more exponential at the heavyweight division. But obviously, you come in like I said. It's it's your three losses that you have are all decisions. You submit. Got you've you know you've got three KOs, seven submissions, and five decisions. And if it goes to decision, you know it. it Five times out of the eight times it goes to the decision, you end up winning it because of your because of your conditioning and your power, and you're getting better every time you go out there. Is that I know you strive to push your conditioning every single time. Is that always something that's always in the back of your head? Oh crap, camp is coming again. I've been off for a month and a half. Now it's like I start ramping up my conditioning. Is that the toughest part of camp for you? Is, is really getting your conditioning back? No, because what I try to do when I'm not when I'm not in camp. So for the last three or four months, no matter what, I'll condition uh, either one to two long conditioning periods like the hard ones and then I'll have one or two little short ones and then I make sure to grapple and and uh you know every once in a while with the sparring and things like that so I, I keep it I mean I, I keep it you know I have a short time to 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 shine in this in this industry and uh you know my number one goal is to get as good as I can get and do the best that I can do and so uh you know, I make sure to keep up on the conditioning so when it is time to, you know, eight weeks out to really start focusing, I'm not just dying the first three weeks of camp. Uh, and I don't, you know, a lot of times I don't like doing it, but, and I'll tell you what, you don't condition for a couple of weeks or a month, and then you come back and the first time you get on that rower or first time you do one of those nasty ones, I mean, man, you, you want to talk about wanting to give up, you know, from, from the start. So uh, I don't ever like to get in that position and, and put myself in that position. Plus, you never know when you're going to get that call short notice. Uh, you know, and you have an opportunity to go and, and fight. Uh, and I want to make sure that I'm always prepared to do that. So uh, I take the time and I uh, look at it as uh, of my job being a professional athlete. And I take it serious year-round so that I don't have to go through that nasty time. And it's still nasty. And it's still hard to make that change, and, and it does, man. When you ramp it up, it can really, uh, it can really, you know, it can really get difficult. But you know, for me, as long as I don't give up and I do the best I can do, then uh, you know things turn out just the way they're supposed to. And uh, as long as I accept that, man, you know, life can be pretty good. Well, Court, I want to appreciate you. Uh, I'll tell you. I appreciate you coming on here with MMA Oddsbreaker. I know it's. Uh coming up on fight time so i know it's tough it's getting a hold of you we've it. ever talked man yeah yeah i like it and i'm i'm sorry i it's my fault uh because hackerman has to, you know has given me your number before and try to get you in and i didn't want to bother you uh the week of a fight trying to get you on trying to get you on for an yeah. interview and he's like no, no no don't worry he's fine he's fine he's not like the other guys he's fine I'm like all right i'll, I'll yeah. text him and see what he does i don't you know i'm not going to hold my breath and you hit me back right away and i really appreciate that because I, I do know it's fight week i do know how tough it is being in that space but now that we got you on here one time now, just realize, every time you fight, you're going to be on. Cool, man. 
Well, I appreciate that, man. I've always been a fan of yours. I've always watched you. I appreciate all that you've accomplished in your career. So I appreciate you taking the time to do an interview with me. Thanks, Carl. I really appreciate that, man. It means a lot coming from you because I'm a fan of yours as well. It's it's weird now being uh, being this older guy and being a fan of a lot of a lot of the athletes I get to interview now, and you're one of the guys I'm a fan of. I really enjoy watching you progress every time that you fight. You get a little better. Man, and I appreciate that. All right, Carl. You have a great rest of the day. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Yeah, 